My name is Ben Cook and welcome to Anglin Info. Hey guys, uh, we're here today for an Anglin Info Members Day. We're down on the Stainy Canal over at Thorn. Uh, we're fishing on pegs 160 through to 180. Uh, we've got about a dozen or so members here with us today. Um, today's session is going to be a little bit different to the normal one in that it's not just going to be kind of an out and out match session. Um, we have got a bit of a tutorial going on this morning. Carl Shepperton's kindly volunteered to uh, come along and uh, show us his way of uh, fishing on Bloodworm and Joker. So hopefully we'll all learn a few things today and you guys will find this video of interest. So I'll leave you with Carl and he's going to show us how to mix the ground bait up and how to prepare Bloodworm and Joker. Right lads, uh, welcome. Hopefully none of this will be sucking eggs too much, but if there might be a little bits, I know everyone knows how to mix ground bait, etc. There is a couple of little tricks, um, especially as none of you have ever used Bloodworm and Joker before. The reason we do it slightly differently is there's a lot of salt in ground bait. Ground bait and Joker don't like going together in terms of the salt. It kills, it kills the worm, it dries it out. So if you mixed your whole, whole bucket up full at the start, over the course of a session or a match, it could tend, end up killing the actual joker off itself, so we tend to leave things separate. So first of all, all I do is prepare the actual um, the ground bait itself. This time of year has, is a little bit different from the summer. Summer you can get away with chucking everything in a bucket, mixing it up and away you go. Same as a lot of carp puddles. When we're fishing for small roach in quantities, we tend to, you want to refine that a little bit by taking a lot of the particles out. It seems a bit of a waste, it's not, because what you can do is you can actually bag the stuff up, chuck it in a bag, chuck it in a freezer, chuck it in a sealed, sealed container, save it for the middle of summer. It's dry particles, so it's not going to go off. Put it away and use it in your carp mixes in summer to make a really active mix. The two that I've used is quite, quite well known on this canal itself is Dynamite Silver X Roach in black and Frenzied Hemp. Both of them are high con have both got a high content of hemp seed themselves. Reason being, roach love hemp. A lot of fish love hemp, but on here, the, the canal is absolutely stuffed with them. So it's a good bait to use. I've used it for quite a few years myself now. So easiest way to do it, get your, get your riddle, whole bag, and just give it a quick riddle off. Right, so that's the roach mix. You see how much is actually left over in there, in a full bag. Yeah. Like you say, if you want to keep it, you can keep that for the summer, not a problem. So there, we'll just get rid of it. And as you look now, it's a hell of a lot finer than what it was when we started. Exactly the same with a frenzied hemp. Yeah, you don't want to introduce too much feed. What you want to do is, You've got to, it's, it's a bit more, it's a bit about judgment on the canal itself. In the summer you can use quite a decent amount of ground bait and it won't scare the fish off so much. Because we've had a bit of rain this week as well, the canal's a little bit clearer than it, it can, can be. It can make the fish back off slightly a little bit more. With the high feed content and the temperature starting to drop as well, the fish's metabolism is starting to change, so they're starting to eat a little bit less. So the actual processed food, what they actually, actually goes through the fish, you want to try and reduce that. Basically, you're not overfilling them. And you don't want to put them off too much without, before you even start. You still want a little bit to go in the, in the actual canal itself. Because you want a bit of feed, you want a bit of activeness to bring the shoals in. Later on, when we're actually topping up, all I top up with is your actual soils itself. So there's no feed content other than the joker. It's joker rich. You've got the shoal in there, you've targeted them into an area you want. And you just want to keep them there. So, as it is for now. Both ground, uh, both ground baits are in, and we'll just give them a quick mix dry. Obviously a hell of a lot easier with a drill than doing it by hand, and a riddle. There you go, nice and mixed. The reason we use dark as well, as opposed to a natural colour, and if you haven't got, if you've only got natural colours, the same as the leaves, I've got plenty of black colour in here, is when the bed breaks down, you've got the shawl over the top, it doesn't cast so much of a shadow of the fish. There's a lot of pike in here, so you don't want to spook them. You want to 
reduce the amount of pike that are actually going to go through your swim because if they go through they will ruin it and it takes them a while to bring them back so you've got to effectively start again so as you would normally just mix your ground bait up And there you are now, it's quite a wet mix as it is at the moment, easily moulded into a ball and it can break down. It doesn't take much water but you will need to add more in a bit, but as it is for now, that's your ground bait, so we'll leave that to one side. Again, like I said before, but it's in, you've, got to, you've got to judge of how much ground bait to how much actual lime you need to actually use. I'd err on the side of caution just because of the amount of rain that we've had recently in terms of how much ground bait is going to go in initial feed a little bit more so i'd go 70 30 or maybe even 60 40 so 60 percent ground bait 40 percent lean there's actually a high quite a high content of lean and soil that's actually going in reducing that risk of overfeeding fish and the easiest way to do it take that bait we want 10 balls at the start six on one line and four on the other so i'll go 60 40 and that can go to a side and that's going to be my mix my initial feed and it's as easy as that for that first bit second part is your soils the first one is damp lean readily available for most shops all it is is just a clay clay based soil it's inert there's no feed content it's heavy this canal is nine foot deep nine to ten foot so you want the bait on the bottom that's where you want to be fishing it you don't want anything up in the water because as soon as you start pulling fish off the bottom the shore starts spreading out you want them on the deck the easiest way to get them down is to use soil the other one to bulk it out is more little soil found up and down the bank i just went up and picked a few few buckets full up for, for everyone and all i've done is passed it through a maggot riddle to get rid of any of the stones any lumps any grass that's come out of it it's a nice fine soil and all I do is mix these two together in a 50-50% ratio. So again, we've got our six balls in there, for, so all we need is four balls now. It might sound odd, but we're actually going to put four balls in here, but that will make up the... goes in there. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And again, in with the ground bait, ground bait whisk. Probably actually done this the wrong way around, but give us that a second. Chuck that in there. And that in there. and give that a nice mix up as well. So basically when we come to the end of it, all of that is gonna go with that and that's gonna be your initial feed. This won't mix itself alone, it's, it's, soil is hard. If you actually press it like that, although it's damp, as soon as you start mixing it with the ground bait, the dryness, it starts breaking up so much and you can't compress it into balls. So what you need is to add a binder, and in this case, it's grey lime. Grey lime, again, is basically clay-based cement. It's very, very strong in its binding properties. And literally all you'll need is about that much for that whole lot in there. Don't add it to the ground bait, it goes straight into the soil. We'll just add a tiny little bit more. Again, you see the dust coming off the top. When you initially do it, mix it by hand first until it starts mixing together. Because you've got obviously damp soil and damp lean in there, like any other ground bait it's it's already got water content in it so if you actually grab it now and grab that in fact you feel how and that's just a tiny tiny little nip it doesn't need much that will get all your bait that will go all the way to the deck before it starts breaking up
that's what it's about. It's, it's about pinpointing everything where you want the fish. You don't want them up in the water because as soon as they come up, they spread out and then the shoals everywhere. You want them on the deck. So what you do is make sure it gets to the deck. And in this case, on all of, a lot of Yorkshire's canals, the deep soil is a big, big part of it. If we come back to that one now, if you actually look at that from where it was, it's dried off quite a bit already itself. So again, now is a good time just to add a little bit more water. And start bringing that back again. And we are nice and wet again. See how if you start doing like that, it just starts to form little little clumps. It's got, it's got a lot of moisture in there. That's going to take on a bit more water yet still. But we'll come back to that just before we start to use it. But that's near enough there. Everyone happy with that? It's fairly simple, isn't it? Like I say, mixing ground bait is mixing ground bait. But the idea is you keep the two separate so you don't kill this before you even start. Right. Bloodworm and Joker. Very, very, very simple in terms of preparation. A lot, it confuses a lot of people because a lot of people don't use it, which is absolutely fine. For years I never used it and it confused me. I didn't want to touch it, I was scared of it because I thought it was, it was expensive, it was hard to prepare, it was hard to fish, it really, really isn't. A lot of good tackle shops will sell it in the winter months. If not, you can order it online via Sam Wildsmith. He pretty much supplies a lot of the UK stock, to be fair. It comes from either Russia or Poland, whichever countries he goes to and it's always top, top quality. It's used by a lot of the big match anglers throughout the UK. A match pack itself range between 12 and 16 quid, depending where you get it from. Um, comes in two packs of envelope, two bits of newspaper. The first one is your blood worm. If you want to have a look at it. Quite dormant at the moment, because it's quite cold out here. But these are your hookers. These are not going to go in the feed, they're going to go on your hook. Easiest way to prepare these, you get a tub of water, it doesn't need to be deep because they still breathe, they yeah. still like to pop the red up. So just a little bit of water in a tub. If you've got a white one, even better, so you can actually see them in your tub. Mm. And that's your blood worm. Mm. Why are they going now? Now they're going. How long will they last for? If you keep them, if you keep them in newspaper, you keep it, keep the newspaper damp, keep changing it. You can get a, a couple of days, maybe three or four days at the most out of them. If you had the proper tanks and the aeration, you can keep them for weeks. The likes of Alan Scott Hall and people like that who are on the winter leagues, on here pretty much throughout every week of the year, they keep theirs in tanks and they can keep them for a good time. Whatever they don't use, it saves on costs. But the initial outlay for obviously all that stuff might be expensive. For me, it's easier. I know I'm going to be fishing it on a Saturday or a Sunday. I just order it, use it as and when. I don't get a chance to fish the, the leaves because of my shift patterns. But that's your blood worm. As simple as that. Nothing more needs to be done and that's ready to go. I have got a black tub. You can use a white one for ease for seeing it. Or a little trick is to have a, a white or a light coloured towel. Stick it in the water, dampen it off. This is great in winter because you can just stick it on your knee, pull a pinch out and leave them on there. Saves your hands going in every single time and freezing your fingertips off. Plus you can see them a bit easier as well. It's just daft little things like that that can make a difference. Right, the joker. Again, comes in a what you call them, in the newspaper. What you want is it to be as dry as possible for separating as much as you can. So if you've had it and the newspaper is really damp, swap it out the day before, put in some fresh stuff and it'll take a little bit of the moisture out or at least on the morning before you come it'll soak up a lot of the moisture out of the actual worm before you start. As daft as it is they need moisture to live mm -hmm. but we're about to chuck it in there. Mm -hmm. So you want it dry so it separates easier. If you don't you just, just end up using a little bit more lean to actually separate it and all you literally do you damp lean that we riddled off before, just grab some and sprinkle it over it. And then all you do, you can be quite you can be quite vigorous with it. It's quite hardy stuff, to be fair. What actually is it? Worm? It's worm, yeah. That's all it is, just worm larvae. Just lives on the bottom of most most water waterways in the UK, throughout Europe, throughout the world pretty much basically. And you see how it's starting mm. to break down? 
that a little bit more. Now what I do... You overdo that? Not really, no, because it's going to go in lime anyway. Lime, lime's not going to hurt it as much as ground bait's going to hurt it. So, what I tend to do is I take a third of it off and leave it wrapped up for later on so it stays fresh. But because we're going to we're going to split this pack, right. I've done the whole lot. But normally I take a third off, leave it wrapped up, and then I'll do it if I need it. I can do that later in the match. Or if you know you've got two days consecutive, it depends how it's fishing. It's just. Like you say, everyone likes cost so cost effect. Like the of the the I just yeah, the I just yeah, yeah, I just leave that in the thingy and just take it apart. Right, it is starting to break up, but stick some more. On. Come on. But from that little clump that we had at the start, you see how it's all now yeah. separating. So if we leave that a couple more minutes while we're getting ready, that'll break itself down. Right. But in terms of Bloodworm and Joker and the prep, that is it. There's nothing more you need to be done. Like I say, when I was younger and I first, people started speaking about I thought you had to do all this big fancy stuff, the likes of Grey Lean. <laughs> grey Lean's great if you're on a shallower canal and you want to feed it neat. Put the Grey Lean on because it's dry, it will separate it quicker. Most of the time, damp lean. You can see how it's gone from that little block, yeah. and it's now spread out. And the clump. Do you always do this on the bank side. Or always do, do it. it to doubt? No, always do it on the bank side. Yeah. And then it's there. It's fresh. It's ready. And you can regulate it as much as you like. Would you mind just talking us through your rig set up, please? No, of course. Um, in fact, do you want to chuck us one of the top kits, Matt? Probably be easier. <laughs> well, it's nearly there, isn't it? I mean, it's just. Yeah. Like you say, most of the thing with bloodworm and joker fishing is prep. Yeah. And for what probably takes 20 minutes explaining it here, yeah. when you're doing it normally and you're just on your own, you get on with it, it takes you five, ten minutes and it's done. It's not exactly really difficult. Uh, in terms of rig wise, number four, number five elastic, depending on how it's fishing. This one's a number four at the moment on a 0.6 gram float. I've also got a 0.8 and a 1 gram float as well. All depends on what the tone the canal is like. I'll try and use the lightest, lightest rig possible, but if I need to and it's towing, stick the heavier rig on, get the bait on the bottom where the fish want to be. That's where your feeding zone is, that's where you want to be in. So don't be afraid to. Line itself is 011 Preston Power Line. A decent sized line, don't mind using 012 as well, it offers you that little bit of stiffness. Because it's nine foot deep, you want to prevent tangles, so the th a thicker line will help with with reducing tangles the float itself is uh, these are made by one of my mates Rob Marsh Boggy Marsh um, it's just a wire stem float 0.6 balsa body with a solid tip the tips are cut down slightly just so that it can actually set a little bit quicker on the water you don't want loads of bristle sticking out you only want it down to a, as low as you can possibly see it the reason being is hopefully you'll see the difference between a bite when it pulls it under and a lift bike Lift bikes you don't know, you don't always see on here. What it's a case of is under reading your float. Where you, if you say, for example, as soon as the floats touch the water, it takes four seconds for it to set, settle to the end of the tip. You count in your own head four seconds. If after four seconds it's still up, that's a lift bite. So you strike. You don't necessarily always see the float lift up as a lot of people think you do. Moving down from there, hook length is 07. Colm Extreme fluorocarbon line, nice, nice and light to a size 22 PR311 hook, barbed hook. 8 inch hook length, first drop a shot right above the loop itself, next one 8 inches above and then I've got the main part of the bulk if you can see on there. Yeah. It's a positive rig like I say, you want this on the deck. The float currently is set up for a bang on the bottom but I will raise it up by an inch and it could be where it could be a case of playing about with it that it might end up going up to six inches over maybe a little bit more at times it all depends on what it's doing the one gram rig will definitely be over because of the flow on the water the ID you combine the toe as much as possible but the bulk itself a number eight number eight shot I've got one sat an inch inch and a half just below it this acts as like a, again to prevent tangles as much as possible it acts as like a bit of a boom it brings the last little bit away from the bulk 
ready for the rest of the rig to start falling down on a, a more natural natural fall through the water and then above it I've got number on this one I've got five number 12 shots the reason they use number 12s they're nice and light but because you've got your float sat quite low down especially with balsa made floats they take on water throughout uh, throughout basically the period of the session not all do it depends how they finish but a lot of the time they do take on a bit of water and it you've seen you've had it before where your float sank a bit of bristle grease to bring that back up or you could just nip one of the number 12 shot off shot off and it'll bring it back up slightly bringing your float back up to where you can see it you mentioned about the barbed duck. you need barbed duck for the blood worm no you don't need barbed duck for the blood worm i like a barbed duck on a canal because maybe not so much pleasure fishing it just depends on how you want to do it but especially match anglers you want to make sure every fish counts yeah, barb hook or micro barb mm -hmm. is just another aid to helping make sure that fish don't get bumped off yeah. um, the elastic itself again it depends on who you talk to as to, as to how they set up i know a lot of guys they've got a bung in the number one section and they like to have a short piece where they can hit it and pull it in i've got it through a top kit full top kit and it was only for an article I read quite a few years ago with Alan Scott on saying he could he could hit a fish a lot of elastic comes out but he could ship back quite quickly and then lift and into his net or swing to hand if you if it's the right time to swing to hand again pulling away from the pike it just depends on who set it up and how it is me personally I prefer through a top kit and I like the fact that you can actually ship your pole back quickly to where you need it to and then get it get the fish up if it was a skimmer then I'd want it to stay a bit, I'd want it to stay down a little bit so it doesn't spook, come up to the top and spook the shoal too much because they're generally a lot bigger than the roach are. Unless you're on the, unless you're fishing hemp and you can get some decent sized hemp, as well, uh, hemp fish as well. Any questions? What size are your droppers? The droppers on this one are, what's this one, 0.6, number 10s. On the one gram rig, they're number 8s. They're yeah, big. Full of bungs or side pullers on the outfits or anything, right? No. No. Okay. no. Straight in, just so that if it does come out, you can just wind a bit of elastic on without messing about. Because solids do have a tendency to hang out the end a lot of the time, especially on thin tip kits. Mm. Happy? Yeah. So, if you want to get set up, we'll come round. Right, so oh, that's us now. So, we've got we'll our ground bit in this bucket and, and the lame in this one. So, all we need to do is basically mix it together. I have put a little bit more water in the ground bit. Just to add a look, yeah, I've dried out a little bit, obviously with everyone getting set up. So I've added a little bit more water. Probably over wetted it actually slightly, but the leaves are a bit drier. So once that mix in, you should get a really good consistency. As easy as that. Right, so like we said, initial feed. Personally, I like to put six balls on the short line, four on the long line. The reason I do this is I want to get on that shorter line. So if I've got a little bit more bait in the water, chances are I can hold the shoulder a little bit quicker before I need to refeed. I tend to start on the longer line to give that shorter line a chance to settle. Both my rigs, or all three rigs, are all exactly the same length as they are at the moment, and they're both plumbed up. One for seven meters, one at 13. It's the same depth at those two you're just starting to come out of the ball itself on both sides um, with that as well silt all the crap that's at the bottom of lakes that naturally and canals that naturally gets drawn into you're just off that so you're just starting to come up away from it all so it gives you a better chance and a bit more of a clearer patch for your bait to sit on so all we do is measure out our 10 balls Ten. and we've got a bit left over for top ups hopefully we won't need too many but again it all depends on how the fish are reacting how they're feeding as to how quick you need to top up little ways or ways that you can tell that you need to top up if you catch in you catch in well as soon as your bite starts to slow down you, and you'll see it because you'll be catching quite consistent hopefully your bite starts to slow down is a good sign that you need to actually top up your swim itself if you get to a point where there's just perch in your swim you've pretty much the roach have moved out if you was in a competition like the winter leagues or any match that you was on here that's the point where you know you've gone 
that one step too far so everything's about preempting reading your swim hopefully you'll make that you'll, you'll you'll be able to see that you'll make that decision and go right i'll put another ball in if you feel you need to come off it and rest it by going on the other line keep them both topped up because the chance you might need to rest it so you might need to go that little bit further out but keep it there keep it going be proactive don't just sit on it and think the fish are going to stay there because they're not but all we do now i've measured out basically 250 mil of the joker that goes straight in over the top and just give it a nice mix around so now if you want to have a look pass it around you'll see how rich the balls are as I mix the rest up Doesn't look it, does it? No. Well, that'll just break right down on the bottom. That will just break down on the bottom, yet. Yeah. Like I was talking about short earlier, it's consistency wise, it all depends on who the angler is as well. <coughs> I've seen guys on here, they're like a real nice, fine, fine mix with a lot of activity. I know guys where they mix it to an absolute clay because they want it to sit on the bottom. It just depends. Is there a right way and a wrong way? Not really. Yeah. You're talking about top match anglers who fish this all the time and they all catch. So it's about getting your bait to the bottom, gearing it in a feeding zone, gearing it where you want it. Target, targeting your fish. Same principles apply on any lakes, anything like that you go to. Same thing there. It's just having that little bit prior thought of what you're doing. A lot of people sit and they'll sit and they'll sit in a match and you can look and think just make that one little change as daft as it is it could be something that's so small but some people do some people don't have you ever seen how it breaks down when it's in the water or not? Uh, i've not actually no, no. Be, that'd it's be interesting good. though yeah um to be fair rob Wooten and people like that i think they do some underwater series right. i've not watched them all so there might be something on there yeah, to be fair yeah. Yeah. could be worth it Possibly, yeah, possibly. Possibly. I know uh, Messingham, Messingham Sands, not far yeah. from here, one of, one of my local fisheries. They, they've started doing some underwater series, not so much for Bloodworm and Joker, yeah. but they've started like targeting the, the cruisers, right. the F1s, and the Roach to see how they. So when you do see a little bit of a sketch like that, how yeah, just what how they the actually. Fish react to it yeah. Three, six. <laughs> There's the other one. Right. If I can just. You're left handed. I am, yeah. Not only am I left handed, I use my bloody landing net on the same side as well, which is weird. I never had anyone sh to show me how to fish a pole when I was a kid because my dad's only got one arm. So I had to sort of like lay myself, and it's a bit of a mishmash to be honest. Are you right handed now? Yeah? No, I'm left handed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm right handed, I've fished left handed for years. Yeah. All near and far my life. My brother says, you've got to change. It's all. It's so easy. But I can't throw on your left hand. No. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Like you say, you see all the other left handed people, Alex Dockett here, people like that, Lindholm. Yeah. They've got the landing net there. Yeah. I have man on my left. So when I get it in, I actually swap hands. <laughs> Bizarre. I've tried, I've tried tra training myself to change. So. Like I said, 13 metres, all I've done is I've picked a point on the far bank. You see how there's like a natural line of where like the tree lines and everything is? It's quite clear and then it's quite dark. I've picked a point where it's dark so I can always see my float as much as possible. The light will change throughout the day, but knowing this canal, it doesn't change much. Uh, no, I'm actually slightly down there to be fair. Again, it all, I like being, I'm not a big fan of balling in on here, I like being accurate. The likes of the New Junction Canal, different story altogether. It's, you use the, uh, you use the splash to bring the fish in. Yeah. Yeah. 
something like that. Yeah, you'd sort of like do it the opposite way and you'd use the splash to bring the fish in as opposed to actually cupping it in. Or for most of your balls anyway and then be accurate for the last couple. Whereas this, you know, you're going to be pinpointing it on a, on a point. You want your rig over the top of it. Why is getting in my way? Aye. Yep. Yeah. Oh, All right. <laughs> Dave's a good angler. <laughs> On the camera, and so my answer. <laughs> Surprise, Will haven't had it by now. To be fair. Yeah, as he saw me buy it. Oh no, that's not what you want. The cup's spun round. Right. So that's a long line done. Four on the long line. Yeah. Some people go 50-50 and they'll do five, five and five. It's, again, everyone's got their own, their own ways. Is every, anything right and wrong? Not necessarily. Can you do things better? Of course you can. How long did you expect to be fishing Pretty much straight away, mate. It's quite, uh, it's quite an, an instant bit. This canal is very roach dominant. There's roach in every single peg, yeah. and lots of them. So it's very, very quick. The bait. What size are you Four ounces, as an average. But there is smaller. There is bigger. A lot bigger and a lot smaller. Would you normally start back fishing long, or would you go? I always start long. The reason being, I want to get this short line going. The short line is where you're going to catch quick. So if I can rest it as long as possible, get the fish on it, get on going confidently, and then come on it at a, a later point. How long do you give it? About an hour? Uh, it, all depends. it all depends on how the long, long line's performing as well. It's, I still don't like to come off feeding fish. And you can judge, especially if it, pleasure fishing is different, like you say. You can do what you want as and when. A match, you've got to judge it how other people are catching as well. If you're not as quick as other people are, like if you can see they've dropped onto the shorter line, they're catching just as quick as you are, but on the shorter line, they're going to catch more yeah. overall. So, like you say, four on the long line, six on the, six on the short line, and give it a chance to rest. There's a little bit of a tour on the water at the moment, so I'll go with a slightly heavier rig, not too much. I've just got an inch of a depth as well, I plumbed up to bang on dead depth. Right, hopefully, what I'll do now. Say again. Would you ever change to riding an inch or two on bottom or not? It's, well, that's what I say, I've just gone over depth, so I am, I am actually on, yeah, it's, you want the bait as static as possible. So, any means that you can do to get that, yeah, so, I don't know if you can all come in and see this. So what I was saying, we just, just so it gives you an idea, not so much today, because it's not absolutely freezing. But definitely in the winter when it's it's icy, yeah. you'll see. So if you get that little pinch of pinch of bait on the towel, instead of sticking your hands in the cold water all the yeah. time, a little damp towel, plus it then separates the actual bloodworm themselves. Mm -hmm. So you can see which one's alive and that one there yeah. isn't moving, so it's it's a dead bait. So what you want is one of the ones that are curled up pretty much, or the one that's quite active. As I was saying to some of you before, if you're gonna multiply hook 
the dark part is the head. So if you hook it like you do a maggot, through the head, two or three. Sometimes, not all the time on here, but sometimes you can, if they're really having it, you can put six or seven mm. on a slightly bigger hook. Like you say, I've got 22 on today, but you but can up it to a, a should be something. Right, so you rig it, you rig itself, if you let the line go in and just follow it down, don't just drop it in and let it, let it drop down, actually follow it down, because a lot of the time the bites come fairly, fairly quickly, so you need, be, need to be able to see it. So now there's my float, so I know it's going to take two seconds, there we are, that's the float settled. If the float was set up any more than that now, then I know it's a lift bite. You see the little dink on it then? Yeah. And then the same again, nice and slow down. So one, two. See it going down? Right. Yeah. Skip it. Yeah, I don't know if it's because you, because you, because you are slightly on that slow. Yeah. I don't know if it's because the the pull it, because the aim, the yeah, yeah, and the aim down slightly. I think you you do get lift bites, yeah. you do get plenty of them, but I think you seem to you do get more pull unders than you do lifts. That's for sure. Yeah. And try a double. So if you were fishing a match, you'd be wanting you'd be as fast as uh, I'd be wanting it a lot quicker than this than at the moment. But again, you've got to judge who's around you as well. If it's if it's an overall match, obviously that's hard to judge. But if it's sections, then yeah, you can you can always see you can you can see what's going on. When would you be looking to catch the better quality? Um, they can come at any time to be honest. With Bloodworm and Joker, it's you're looking aiming you're aiming more for smaller fish but lots of them. But if I was fishing a match, I'd have a 14 and a half meter line with hemp. Yeah, I'd put a big 150 mil pot of hemp in and then I'd be feeding for two or three hours straight over the top of it, quite heavily, within maybe about half an hour, 40 minutes before I wanted to go on it or go try it, I'd start cutting the feed back. Yeah. Feed at the same rate, but I'd feed less. I'd feed like four or five grains of hemp as opposed yeah. to 10 and 12. And then go on it and try it. If you get bites straight away, then they're on it. If you don't, or you start, you get a few liners, it means they're not fully on it yet. Yeah. Now we used to use tears in, in winter, especially on the trend. Yeah. That used to get the better quality. Yeah. Yeah, but if you can if you can get on the hemp and you can go on it early enough, yeah. you can get a big big weight very quickly. Some I know a few of the guys asked me about today, but I didn't want to overcomplicate things by, especially it's not something I could show you now, other than the rigs and how to feed how I'd feed it, yeah. because you, it does need a good few hours for it to really really settle down. Well, I must admit, it's not fast and furious today. You know, because it was so cold last night. No, it's normal. It's. I don't think the cold really affects it as much because the canal's used to. It it fishes all the way through winter, even when it's freezing. Yeah. It's rain affects it a lot more because that changes your pH levels, it changes your clarity in the water, etc. But I don't think cold affects it so much. Yeah, all the, the, all the banks. Come on. Hello. 
for looking at water line, it's down a foot. Yeah, do you know, for where it's been. Yeah, for where it has been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not so not so bad because it's a man-made one as opposed to a more natural one. For now, yeah, until it starts to slow down. But what I am going to do is, I'm just going to shallow up slightly. No, try and hold it. Yeah, try and hold it still as you can. But what? The last four fish now have all been quite deeply hooked. I'm just going to shallow off slightly. Hopefully, then that'll, when they do bite, I'll be able to see the bite a bit quicker. So it won't be as deeply hooked. Should hopefully get it in its top lip instead. Trash this bloody hook as well. This one's the 08 at the moment. Yeah, you could probably probably actually step it down now to the 06. Because the toes dropped off a little bit. And don't be afraid to chop and change, you know, on your rigs as well. One will perform better than the other. You see how it's a little bit more steady now? So, the next one I'll, I'll drop it down. Hopefully it should bring in a few more bites. So this will go one or two ways, you either won't get a bite because it's not where the fish, where they want it to be or it'll be better like you said where you don't hook them as deeply.
do have a bit, bit, little bit better this morning. She had a better sleep actually last night. I think it's a little bit easier. Fat. There you go. Yeah, look up here. Yeah. Right his top lip now. Just, just shell it up an inch. Just shell it up an extra inch. Can't get the hook out. That's what I say. It's, you know when you let you read the magazines and they say about it's always good chopping and change, going up and down, etc. It is worth it. It's. I've always believed as well, if you're struggling to catch or it's not quite right, if you're thinking of do some, doing something, just do it. Yeah. Just just don't think about it, just just do it. Right. Chances, if you, you're going to sit there for 10 minutes thinking about it, you might as well actually try it. And see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't make a difference, yeah. then you can have a go back or you, you try something else. Yeah. And it's the same with baits on commercials. If you're thinking, oh, I might do better on sweet corn, for example, rather than pellet. Just change it, just do it. What's your set point? It's not a dacron, is it? Me? No, it's uh, I've got like a dacron connector on the end. Yeah. Or just the bead part of it, but it's direct to elastic. Or just a crow's foot? Yeah, basically. With just the bead behind it. Yeah. Again. Does it... I'm not sure if it... I can see the principle behind it when people say it's a more direct contact with your elastic yeah. rather than pulling a dac uh, the actual dacron part of a connector. Me just faffing about, I thought I'll give it a season to try it. Yeah. I like it. I like the fact that if it does, if your elastic does go, you can just quickly tie a little knot yeah. and you're away again. See, that's I've changed that to the point six. You see how it's starting to flow again now. Yeah. It's the only trouble with canals, it's just chopping and changing, so for what was probably worth it two put-ins ago, not so much now. Although you still get obviously bites, but presentation-wise, the 0.8 gram is better at this moment. So that's why I like to 